I've just had a little technical failure, so I thought I'd make a video just covering what I'd done to find the fault and fix it. I should have actually videoed it from the start, I just didn't think about that at the time, because I was so engrossed in the idea of finding what was up. So this is the power supply that supplies about 9.6 volts, which is an odd voltage. It would have been hard to find one that put out an identical voltage. Um, but it powers the sort of powered speakers on my computer system, and the laptop I use. And... I was actually watching, looking at the comments section of this channel, and someone said, oh yeah, what about this in this video? And I went back and took a look at it, and it, the, it was silent. I thought, all right, why is it silent? But then I just realised that the light was off in the speakers, and the turned out that the power supply... I, I unplugged the power supply, and stuck my meter uh, on the end plug, and it, the power supply was dead. So... I've opened it up, and unfortunately it was like uh, sort of glued or ultrasonic welded together, so that's going to be messy to put back together again. But uh, I opened it up, and the first thing I expected was that maybe there was going to be signs of stuff blowing up inside, or maybe the little fusible resistor had popped, but the fusible resistor was intact. And I thought, OK, that's interesting, and I just uh, routinely checked what components I could see, so I thought, well, sometimes the output diode goes short circuit, it just, it's what happens with some of these, the, the diodes in these often fail because they're quite under quite a lot of stress because of the high frequency output of the transformer. And I measured it, and indeed, let's bring the meter in, it had gone short circuit. So here's the original diode, the meter's in continuity, and if I stick it across this diode, it's showing just dead short circuit across it either direction common enough failure mode for the diodes. And I was thinking, oh darn, where am I going to get a diode like this? A sort of suitably high frequency rated, uh, fairly high current one. This particular one is an HSR560. And then I thought, what about that little... It, ironically, it's the exact video I was looking at was the one that was this pink power supply that I took to bits that I jokingly said, oh well, at least one bit's 3 amp, it's the diode. And uh, the diode, uh, well... I have taken it out and I've put it in here, and now it's reading correctly, so I just thought, well, let's uh, give this a go then. Let's put this back into its case so that it kind of contains the bang. Can I get this back into its case? Oh, it's tight. Oh, there we go. And I'll probably put the lid on, just in case it does do anything volatile. And then I'll plug it in. Oh, is this going to go bang? Keep my fingers away from the crack around the edge just in case it does shoot stuff out. It's not going bang yet. Let's check the voltage. So let's put this down to the 20 volt range. Someone's asking why do I use a manual ranging meter. I use this one because it's got such a huge display. It's great. It's a really nice meter. So uh, negative onto the outer one, positive onto the inner. There's my 9.6-ish volts. Well, 9.8. Good enough. So uh, that power supply seems to be back in action. And it was this diode on the output side, the secondary side, that was faulty. So that's a good fix. I shall just carefully unplug this now without pulling the cover off and jamming my fingers into the circuit board. And that just leaves uh, putting this back together. Oh dear. Time to crack out the sticky tape. <laughs> 